Welcome, everybody. Welcome to uh, David's Kitchen. I've got uh, lots of fun stuff for you on tap. Is this a cool kitchen? Uh, we've got, thank you. We've got a lobster biscuit, uh, original creation of mine using dollar store ingredients and uh, basically producing a really tasty meal at a very low cost. Yeah, excited to talk to you about it. I can't wait to just share it with you because I'm, I'm really, you know, trying to slow down. My approach to cooking is more slow than fast. Oh. As I try to speed up, I, I'm telling myself, no, nope, slow down, David. You've got a full hour to do this or actually 52 minutes. All right. So the key to cooking is enjoying your space. As you can see, I look at these little sculptures and things in the background and I enjoy them. Very zen. Yeah, it's a very zen kitchen. And uh, I've got a nice view of the Olympic Mountains out my front window, so I can't complain. Uh, eating at the dollar store isn't so bad. You know, there's alternatives, of course, having more money. But I like to hold on to money because I save it for retirement. And now I'm retired. And I'm a young, young man retired. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I want to show you this product that I found at the dollar store. It's lobster bisque and it's condensed soup. It's made in uh, on the East Coast. I think it's New Hampshire, Hanover, Pennsylvania, sorry. And uh, it along with, this is something that's available by the way, at the dollar store. It along with uh, these Cape May clams coming out of New Hampshire for a dollar are available at the dollar store. and that's a product of the USA. And these things are harvested in the Atlantic Ocean, so uh, they're pretty fresh uh, relative to the radiation levels in the Pacific Ocean. But we're going to get to that, too, because we're going to have a little bit of the radiation levels of the Pacific Ocean in our dish, because uh, Lewis Kemp has a, uh, has a lobster delight package here that's chunk-style imitation lobster meat. I, I was quite impressed with it, actually. Uh, it, it's made of pollock, and it's got some, you know, a few in, ingredients that you may not be happy with. In fact, both ingredients lists are not that great. I mean, the other the can has monosodium glutamate in it, but it just so happens that MSG so tastes just like lobster, <laughs> so it's a perfect match for this particular meal. All right, so we're going to have some. Uh, oh, by the way, the lobster delights you can get for two dollars. So we're looking at uh, four dollars, and then the pasta. I got ancient grain. Ronzoni makes this, and it is indeed non-GMO. See that? Yeah, pretty cool. Nothing like cooking with fresh ingredients. I know. Well, I haven't gotten to the fresh ingredients yet. Base. All right. Well, look at. If you've got real lobster, and there is real lobster in the lobster uh, condensed soup, the, the lobster bisque, there is real lobster. It says lobster pieces in it. I'm not making that up. It's real. All right. This is a dollar as well. Look for these types of things on sale. They usually go on sale when they reach a point where the, guy, the store thinks that these things go bad. They don't go bad for years. It take 10 years for something like this to even begin to go bad. All right, uh, so I'm going to take up the number from $5 to uh, $6. This is inevitable. It happens during the show, so I miscalculated. But you can take it down to $5 if you don't have the extra clams. Now, the clams make make the entire thing. It's going to be, I know, 6 bucks is a lot of money. But you can drop it to 5 if you just go with these two combination items. Forget the lobster and go with baby clams and cream of mushroom soup. Okay? You don't even have to have fresh mushrooms to do that. I'm not going to use those today, but you could compensate for that. And it makes a very good spaghetti sauce. It's like an Alfredo. All right. Uh, I do happen to have some really cool uh, organic ingredients today. Oh, by the way, I found this, this one container 
of garlic parmesan. I've had the cupboard forever. I got this for 25 cents. And I just opened it and it, oh man, it's, it smells great. It's going to be so good to, oh, thank you. All right. We got some fresh ingredients here. Organic carrots. I'm including uh, some organic carrots in this. I got this whole package for a dollar. Believe it or not. Uh, we're going to use some, some of these mushrooms. I'm going to use a whole onion. And I'm going to use some celery that I've been wanting to eat up out of the kitchen. Now have your Parmesan container available as well because you're going to be looking at about that much Parmesan. All right. Let's move over here to the dishes. Pan, okay. I'm gonna prep the onion, the celery, and the red pepper. The red pepper I got for 50 cents. You can buy those on sale fairly easily. This celery, I, <laughs> yeah. I managed to pick up a stock of celery, an entire thing of celery for 67 cents this week. It is not organic, but it smells okay. Nice celery we got there. A couple big stocks worth. A red pepper. An onion. My knife out. Set my lobster treats over here. All right, let's get started. Cut that onion. There we go. Always use a breadboard whenever cutting vegetables. Very useful. It could just be a piece of plywood if you uh, if you really have you know nothing to work with. I wouldn't recommend staining it or anything. But they make breadboards at uh, Home Depot. You can buy them. Really, very reasonable. All right. Just pieces of wood. You know? But if you don't have a breadboard, cutting is a lot harder. If you're on the road, plastic is, you know, your next best surface to cut on. That's not exactly wonderful. I like the, uh, the naturalness of cooking on a, a bamboo breadboard. That's just the bamboo. I don't like the bamboo that scissor fight uh, makes beautiful flutes out of. Amazing stuff he puts together. All right, so we're going to cut this up. Let me drop the cam a little bit. Very simple. You just drop your knife like that and go like this, crisscross. Eighth inch cuts or quarter inch, somewhere in there. Do the same with the other side. Got a little blemish on there. I'm take that. These are organic onions. If you can buy them in your area, get them. They're a little extra. This cost me two twenty nine for a five pound bag. That's a really good deal, actually. Usually get a three pound bag for 229. All right, um, I'm gonna get a couple pans going here. I'm gonna start my water back here. I'm using about this much water, about half of a container. I'm gonna start at level six, just to get the water going. And I'm gonna do this back burner over here uh, at level three. My old standby. So having a, a fully functional kitchen is really uh, uh, fantastic. There is a lot of nutrition in this meal. The pollock, the uh, red pepper, the onion, the celery, a lot of fiber. And you're getting a mix of protein with starch. And the ancient grain non-GMO uh, wheat is amazing. I've had the spaghetti before. It melds perfectly with this uh, type of a mix. Ah. <sighs> We don't have a farm sink. We just have a deep well sink. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty basic. I don't like them too deep, but it's good enough. You know, you can get a sink like this for about two hundred dollars. Not that expensive. The faucet is about one hundred and thirty. 
a nice sink is important. Uh, having a reasonable uh, working environment uh, that you can replicate anywhere. I mean, you could you could set up a nice kitchen in a, an apartment, condominium, anywhere, really. Uh, there's no bread in this. That's pa pasta. It's ancient grains pasta by Ronzoni. Yeah, I reverse osmosis the water. Uh, we just had a filter uh, cleaning. So I actually hand cleaned my uh, reverse osmosis filter, the one that clogs up the fastest, the, the first stage filter. And this triple stage filter is good. I, I in fact, use a, a secondary filter system called a zero water system. And that's pretty pretty good for uh, creating a fourth stage filtration. So this is a takes all total dissolved solids out. And puts out a pretty good product by the time it's triple or quadruple filtered. Yeah, that's very tasty water. Very tasty. And that's important too, getting filtered water. I'm starting to look like Trump. You're funny. All right, so these burners are going. The hot water is cooking. I'm going to add a little salt to the uh, the water in the boil. So just a, a dash of salt in that water. I'm going to use a little sea salt, preferably. The pan's hot. I'm going to go ahead and put some olive oil down, my usual, about three tablespoons. And you'll see me putting that in the pan right now. And there we go. Getting that heated up. Extra virgin olive oil is the way to go. Uh, these went up. They went up from $11 to $16 in the past two months. So I found an alternative. I went to a one store and found this container of Colavita, really high quality Italian, Rome, Italy, extra virgin. I found this for $350. So Virtually got the same amount of oil in one of those containers for $16 as I got for seven. That's a significant savings. Of course, this isn't necessarily organic, but uh, yeah, I, I prefer pure olive oil, trip code. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our, our show of uh, cooking. I'm making some lobster biscotti, a word I created. Okay, we're going to put the onions down on the pan. And I just grab the onions on the uh, the big knife like this. I scoop it up and just put it right down. I'm going to finally chop up the celery and get that cooking. I think I'm going to take this up to level six too. So both burners at level six. Cover it up and heat it up. I've got a lot of old celery that's just sitting around. I figured, well, I'm not supposed to, you know, use it in the meal. And uh, that's a good vegetable to cook with because it adds a lot of fiber to your meal. And it, it works well because it has a salt base and a, a lobster bisque has a, definitely a salt base. You don't have to add salt to this meal. It's plenty of salt in all, all the different ingredients that come in the can. Uh, we'll be adding a, about a cup of milk to the, uh, the bisque, the condensed milk, or the condensed soup, rather. It requires some milk. So you could use any grade, preferably more fat than less. And uh, go with, I'm using 1% because that's all I have. But today I did a recycling trip and I got rid of a lot of containers. And I was kind of uh, interested in getting rid of my big milk container. So I ended up downsizing my milk into a smaller container. You'll see it pretty funny. Cooking humor, not not that funny. Okay, just kind of dice that the celery right in there, and what you want to do is get that celery down on the grill right away with the onion. So, put that in there. Readjusting camera. Get in there. Yeah. That level six will kick on. It's like a medium high. We're also going to add the carrots, and these are really easy to work with because they're already pre they're already pre peeled. And if you get these, I got this organic bag for a dollar. You can believe that. That's safe. It was 
it is a Safeway ingredient, actually. Anyway, I'm just going to throw some uh, some basic carrots in there. The reason why I'm putting carrots in is when you dice them up, they look like lobster, especially when they're glazed. So mock lobster can appreciate that. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to take them and line them up in a row, six at a time. And just run that knife right along the side like that. Real thin. Because remember, this is a, this is the carrots take longer than the other two ingredients, so we're going in real thin on the carrots. And you can make little medallions out of them so they kind of resemble little lobster pieces. Full of vitamins, great for your eyes. Uh, people have gotten great results from carrots. That's a true story about carrots and vision. If I actually see one carrot a day will make my vision sparkle. I've got good vision as it is, but I, mean, I can tell that my visual range seems to extend whenever I eat carrots. Kind of amazing. I have the eyes of an eagle. Okay. Let me go ahead and get my little wooden spatula here. The chopped carrots resemble the canned clams, which are used to make the lobster and the lobster biscotti. Yeah, thank you. You can <laughs> you can translate everything I say. All right, so we're going to go in there with the uh, carrots now. Take the center section of the carrots. And take a little bit of Italian seasoning. Put a little Italian seasoning down, no more than an eighth of a teaspoon. Just for flavor. And then when I, I do this, I add a little water. Right around the inside, right over the oil and let it set it down. No more than about uh, two, two or three tablespoons of water. Now what this is, is what I call a steam fry. Yeah. And it cooks faster when the water is in there than if you just have plain oil. So on level six, it's going to kind of infuse the flavors. And you're going to feel the, uh, you'll smell it immediately in the house, too. Yeah, I've got the cooking thing going on. And we're at 525, so we're doing pretty well. I'll tell you when I get a boil back here, because that's when my spaghetti's going in there. Okay. Whoa, that was a loud sound. Oh, my God. There we go. That's the final product. Man. That was a, a place, that was one of those trivets that fell down, just a wooden trivet. Uh, I don't really have a value on the house. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't need a washing or anything. I, I have uh, very little interest in money, so I don't really check the market value of things. Yeah, it's not really important to me. People who live in that world often, I can read your lips too. People who, who live in that world often times think about things like that and dedicate their life to money. You might be one of those people. Yes, I own everything. I have an acre here. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hey, let's get this uh, this pepper rinsed off here. Okay. All those other ingredients are cooking nicely. I'm going to pop the uh, pepper out. Take the top off first like that. And then just chop the sides off like that. Usually it takes about three cuts and you're done. And then you can plant this in, the, in your garden for the summertime. And then just go slice like this. Dice, slice and dice. Okay. 
I decided to wear my George coat today because it, it's it's a Kmart special and the the value you get for these suits you get at Kmart is pretty amazing. It, it was actually a name brand when they picked up the line as uh you know consider a fine quality coat. I'm impressed. Feels very nice. I like the fabric. Durable yet has a nice finish. Yes. I feel like father knows best in my suit coat. Bud? But where's Bud? Honey, where's Bud? Uh, Bud's getting high. Um, you lost IQ points just thinking about it. Best use for Bitcoins ever. Wow, what do you got? Oh, missed it. Missed it by that much. Siberia. They use Bitcoin mining to heat homes in the winter. That's a great idea. You know, I, I, I pretty much do that as well, except I don't mind Bitcoins. I just run, uh, you know, TV sets. They're actually pretty good. If you have the old cathode ray tubes, they're great. I don't have cathode ray tubes. I have LCD and LED TVs. I'm trying to get away from LCD. They're, they put out dirty energy. Yeah, Bitcoin mining could definitely generate a lot of heat. Thanks for sharing. Isn't that that Russian propaganda site, RT? Oh, yeah. Didn't they help? Oh, they're, they're the ones that helped uh, fix the election for Trump, right? Yeah, I, I, remember, I know them. Oh, man, I've got an incredible cook going here. Okay, it's steaming out of control. I'm dropping it down to three now. On the, on the main burner, and I'm going to throw those red peppers in. Right on top of the carrots. You don't have to move anything around. Just layer it. Okay. There you go. You can push things around a little bit. Not too much. Though. Okay, we're still steam frying. That boiling water is getting pretty hot. I'm going to pop a couple, a couple cans open here. Super simple meal to make. It's not that complicated. Now, I'm using all the juice inside of the clams to get that, that kind of the fishy, fishy taste that you want. You don't want to drain any of that out. Just leave it right in there. and It's going right into the container with the bisque. It is a little clammy smell, but it really makes that lobster replication taste. Okay. We got a roaring boil back there. We're all set for the spaghetti. I'm going to lift the uh, top on this. Roaring boil. Pop open your box. What you want to do is grab it like that. Pull it out like that grab the end of it like that you see that now watch what I do with it right over the right over the uh, I don't think you're seeing that right over the water you put the bottom in like that nothing is spilled then take it and break it in half like breaking bread away from you and immediately get a stirring rod in there and stir it. Now this is a real whole grain, uh, whole wheat pasta, ancient grain blend that they put together. It has a lot more uh, fiber than most. Now keep stirring it. Keep stirring. Dietary fiber, 20%. Most spaghetti, like... Capellini uh, doesn't give, offer much fiber at all. This has 20% of your daily dietary fiber. Nice, good, man, it's non-GMO. You really, you gotta, you gotta look for non-GMO now when you buy pasta, it's, it is available. And a lot of companies are tuning into this. Okay, we're at level six on that. Got a roaring boil. My celery, my carrots are just about half cooked. Now I'm going to take the clams and dump them right on top of all that. 
Just pour the clams right on top of that. Oh, wait a second. I almost forgot. The mushroom. I'm going to grab about four mushrooms and put this in the dish. Now, mushrooms can cook too. They should get in there before the, uh, the final clams go in. So I'm just going to cut these in half. It's the easiest way to cut a mushroom. Lay them on their face like that and just dice. Uh, nice little mushroom piece. Okay, I'm going to put that in the vegetables. Okay. I'm going to cover that up. Mix it up now. Mix it all up. Okay, and pour the clams right in on top of it. Mix that all together. Beautiful. Now let's cover it up on level three and let it saute. Your sauteing will be about 10, 15 minutes max. We can add this stuff, which is really cool, called oven roasted garlic parmesan sandwich spread. Now this is a product I would never think would go great in a meal, but it does. I've, I've had this before. You did? How did you see that? Fungus among us, smelly clams and fungus makes this dinner taste so great. Yeah. Baika is a cooking person. Are you speaking in German now? Oh, okay. Is the whole room in German? Okay. Give that, that pasta a stir. You don't want those pastas sticking together. Uh, the ancient grains are going to take about 10 minutes. If you got thinner, like capellini, it would take about five. You can make it with any spaghetti you want, even pasta shell. All right, so I think what I am going to do is take uh, some, because this is fairly early in the cooking stage, I'm going to, I'm going to take this this oven roasted sandwich spread, which is actually pretty amazing. Garlic. This will be my garlic. I was going to add garlic. You can add garlic to the dish if you want. But I'm just going to put this in there. Kind of an Alfredo base. I'm going to go with uh, four tablespoons of this. Now, you, you can add a, a, about three or four garlic cloves if you want to make up the difference. Yeah, that was exciting. Huh. Okay. More stir. Nice. Nice. Good cook. And I'm going to just stir it with that spoon so I don't lose all that, that moisture. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to add my lobster bisque now. It's also condensed milk. It looks like condensed soup, basically. I just plopped it right in there like that. Anyway, now I'm going to take the temperature up to level six on both of them. The other one's cooking ra rather rapidly. I'm going to add milk to this container. Yeah, so today I... I I want to condense my containers because I went to the recycler. I, I put my milk in this carrot juice container. I'm going to go with about a, a half of a, of a cup of that in the condensed milk. Well, actually, more like a cup. That's about a cup. That's about six to eight ounces. This is 10.5, so that's like six ounces. All right, give it a stir. Try to get everything, all the taste from the can onto your milk, like this. Yeah, I was quite amazed to see lobster bisque on sale. Now, remember that burner is now going up to level six. I'm going to add all these ingredients together. Just throw it right in there. Okay, there we go. Cooking like crazy now. We're at the roaring boil stage of both the uh, the vegetable medley with the lobster in it. 
Now I have this lobster meat I was going to show you. As this is heating up, this is already pre-cooked in the package. So you really can, you can prep this for a cold salads or hot salads, but it's imitation lobster meat. All right. I rip that top over and set it right in this container. Okay, I'm going to turn the, the burner that has the spaghetti off completely. I'm going to cover it up completely, but slightly off center. So just let a little air out of it. Otherwise, it'll foam up rapidly. Keep an eye on it. Okay, we're going to pull this stuff out of this container here. Okay, then I'm going to... Oh, it smells pretty good, like lobster. Yeah. Yeah, just like lobster. Okay, and I'm going to pour water in it from my filter. I'm going to soak the water in there. See that? Now, this is not the best, the highest quality product in the world. I mean, it's Pollock. And it, but it is, you know, manufactured for a taste enhancement. Yes. You, you really thought that I was going to make real lobster? There is real lobster in the condensed soup. There are little, there's lobster pieces in it from the East Coast. But it's, but it's very little. The clams add protein, too. Okay, so just kind of mix this up in water. Take a spoon and just kind of break it up. It'll get kind of stringy. And I'm kind of desalting while I'm doing it, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm pulling some of the salt out of it. It comes pretty salted. These packages are about 1,200 milligrams of salt, let me say. 360 times three. Yeah, about 1,000 milligrams of salt in a package. So if you have people in your home that are salt sensitive, you want to, you definitely can pull a little bit of the salt out. And you strain it right out once you've massaged it with this, you know, this technique. Take a fork or a spoon, just push it around and kind of, you're, what you're doing is creating the imitation, imitation of lobster meat. Because we all know lobster meat is really kind of like chunky and not mushy, no. All right, so we're going to take that, that juice and just drain it. We don't need that. We'll take the colander and uh, drain it in the sink. All right. Now, I purchased this particular ingredient for 99 cents, so I'm kind of ahead of the curve. Normally, this, ingredient, this process is on sale for $2, this lobster meat. Okay, you've got a roaring boil going on over here. It's now down to just a whimper. Your pasta is pretty much done. I'm just feeling it to make sure it feels good. It feels good. I'm going to cover that up completely. I'm going to put that lobster meat in with the uh, boiling concoction we have here in the back on level six. It is a roaring boil. You should see it. I'm going to put that lobster right on top and just start pushing it in. Nicely. You can actually add a few ingredients at this stage. You might want to consider uh, adding paprika. That's a good addition. I'm feeling my vegetables, they're al dente, which is good, but I kind of want this whole dish to, to fuse and to thicken a little bit. So I'm just going to cover it right up on level six and keep it get that heat going. I'll add paprika to it in a little bit. All right. Exciting, huh? You might want to add a little dill weed to this dish. So I think I'll add a little dill weed and paprika. Simply because dill works great with uh, seafood shellfish. Another idea would be to uh, add a little bit more uh, diced garlic or possibly, that's just an idea, lemon zest. Lemon zest could go in at the beginning stage of this meal and make it pretty good. I believe Sarah might like this. Yeah, definitely add garlic. Paprikas, don't add too much paprika. You can overdose on paprika. It's kind of a toxic ingredient. It One of the side effects of paprika and garlic is it's good for your heart health. 
They say that uh, paprika uh, has the ability to uh, lower lower your uh, your your blood pressure. That's what I've heard. Slightly, slightly. It lowers heart rates, and that's why overdosing it on it could be dangerous. Oregano is good. I put a little of that in the beginning of this meal, but you can overdo the oregano in this meal. You don't want to overdo the Italian seasoning because it will definitely take over the taste of the lobster. I heard wrong. Well, then enjoy paprika. You know, don't don't let me. Hey, Vika, you know, we told you about this a thousand times. I'm going to ban you. I mean, this is getting ridiculous. You know, the only chance you have is be, to be unbanned when I get back in the room. I'll be unbanning all. Uh, you know, there's not many GMOs in this dish, actually. The uh, lobster bisque was made with some basic ingredients. Cornstarch might have gone in it. But, yeah, turmeric is good. You can add turmeric to this dish. Yeah. You can even go in a, in a curry direction, but I would. Yeah, it, it would taste a little weird. Hey, no, I don't think you understand. If you have a little bit of GMOs in your diet, it won't be the end of your life. The studies show that if you eat GMOs for 30 years, you could develop a tumor. 30 to 40 years, based on the laboratory studies done on rats by Dr. Seralini. So a little GMOs is not going to kill you. No, I'm serious. You've got to understand that you can't possibly live in a perfect world. We got radiation dumped on us from Fukushima landing on our organic gardens. Get real. Adapt. Don't be too picky. Humans have to live a lot longer than rats, okay? All right, we're going to go ahead and dip, give it another mix in here. Oh, man, this is perfect. Don't let anything stick. You've got a hard boil going. Wow. Okay, we're done. I'm going to let that turn off completely in its own heat. I'm going to add the dill weed. Put a little dill weed on that. I'd say about a, a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm going to add a little paprika to the top of this just to give it a few shakes. As it's calming down, it's got a full roaring boil and it's going down. Now I'm going to pull that spaghetti out because it's done. And I'm going to drain the water out of it. I run the water so it doesn't put hot water down the sink. You don't want to run the water over your spaghetti. Though. Just drain the water out. There you go. All right. Put that together. I am going to go ahead and spray a little bit of oil on my big container, which I put all my meals in. This thing back here. It's a, a glass container that's pretty cool. I'll push this forward. I'm going to make sure it's totally clean, though. I'm going to wipe out whatever. Yeah, just make sure there's no dust in there. Okay, and I'm going to spray it with a little olive oil and turn the burner up to uh, the front to just low. This point, I'm just heating it up a little bit. The whole meal goes in there. There you go. Get a little jerking action for it. Every every show we do a little of this pump action. All right. Just kind of put a little spritz of oil at the bottom of it, and then put the spaghetti in on top of that, like that. And take the top, and take the entire meal that you're cooking in the back. You're watching? Yeah, thank you. You've seen enough of these shows to know my routine, I'm sure. Everyone says, yeah, yeah, he's going to throw that in there. Okay, so we're going to set this up, and I'm going to throw this entire container of lobster bisque soup with all the ingredients on top of this, like this. Ready? Ta-da! Making sure you get everything on the bottom of the pan. Ta-da! 
And I have uh, one more ingredient that has to go on top of this. And put some water in that pan, especially if you're cooking with stainless steel. You don't want to, you don't want to let that set up. I'm going to take that Parmesan I showed you. About a tablespoon and a half of Parmesan. I'm going to actually put that all broken up right on top. I'm going to take the fork. Kind of, kind of nestle it in around the spaghetti. Don't you don't have to bit, do a big turn on this. You want to keep most of your your food quality on top. All the the lobster is sitting on top. So when you grab it for people, it's ready to serve with a little bit of meat on top. And just sprinkle the whole top with parmesan. Isn't that nice? Beautiful. And if you want a little pepper. Just for flavor. And we're done. Ta -da, da, 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 da. There you have it. There's no motivation killer here, yeah. Oh, sure. It's made lobster. It was in the can now. It was from, uh, I would never wank to that person. Are you kidding me? I would never touch myself to her. Yeah, there, nothing ever happened like that. She's making this up. She's been stalking me. If you have no, any idea what a stalker is like, uh, she's a, she's the worst kind. I mean, she's a suicidal stalker. It's just sad. She needs help, and I hope she does get some help. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, we're all probably wondering that about ourselves, but we're not here to talk about wanking. We're here to talk about lobster. Lobster. So this particular uh, product is available at the dollar store, lobster bisque. And uh, it went into the soup, and the soup was mixed up with a little bit of milk. But again, you can replicate this entire recipe for less money using these simple ingredients, a can of baby clams and mushroom soup. And it, it becomes a seafood bisque as opposed to a lobster bisque, uh, uh, like a bundagas or something. No, that's a soup. All right. I hope everything works out. Uh, I'll be in the other room to start the pre-show, and I'm going to close down the recorded broadcast, and this will be uploaded tonight at 2 in the morning. So, Well, and believe me, this is mouth-watering food. It's not something anyone's going to say, oh, I can't eat this. It sucks. Everyone will like this, it, it, and it's good, too. It's good for you. You know, I don't think there's a lot of lead in these ingredients, frankly. If you've got to eat something, I mean, I would want to get my clams from the East Coast. I'd want to get my fish from, my camera's freaking out. I'd want to get my fish from uh, from the Alaskan waters or the codfish from the East Coast. I really would. So that's what is in here. Pollock comes from Alaska. That's really freaking out. All right, we're going to sign off. Thank you very much for watching this amazing lobster biscuit Getty show. Take care.